All right, how's everybody doing out there? Uh, we are actually working on some parts that we have that have been sandblasted. Now, these have been dustless blasted. This is a dustless blast situation. And before we go any further, I wanna make sure that we got good audio. So if you can hear me, Tim Harmon, can you hear me okay? Is everything working on the audio situation? Let's get a thumbs up on that and we will continue. What we're working on today, once again, is we are going to demonstrate and perform what you should do. Okay, we got uh, thumbs up, we can hear you, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate and I wanna go over the situation. A lot of people don't know about this. Um, a lot of people think that uh, you can just spray primer on this and be done with it. Well, you can't. If you wanna do it properly, you're restoring a car or maybe you're fixing a collision repair that required some type of a blasting situation and that includes soda blasting or walnut blasting or any type of uh, metal stripping, this procedure applies to everything. So let's go ahead and continue with our subject and our story. Um, I'll be right back, hang out right there. Okay, I hope everybody's doing good out there. Um, I can't see myself in the camera over here, so hopefully I'm all framed in and squared in. Before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and explain. I had this stuff dustless blasted, wet blasted. Now, before I met my buddy Steve right here in Moab, Utah, I did not believe in this. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because... Whoever is running the blaster machine is in control of how the blasting is going to be done. So if you are going to have something sand blasted, you're going to have something soda blasted, you're going to have something walnut blasted, you're going to have anything blasted, you better make sure that you find somebody that knows what they're doing. And if it's a company that owns a blasting machine and he's got his employee out there that just started last week, tell him to go fuck off. Tell them to take a hike. You're not touching my shit, all right? You're not fucking it up because that's what happened to two cars, two cars that I restored previously in the past. One of them was uh, a 68 Mustang convertible. We took it to this reputable shop that claimed they knew how to do all this blasting. They were the best in the world. The guy takes it over there and the employee blasts the car and warps the shit out of it. When the owner of the car called the company and said, you fucked my car up, well, there's nothing we can do. The guy that blasted it doesn't work here no more. Are you fucking shitting me? The guy that works there for you, the company that owns the machine and is representing how to do this is not going to cover anything because why? The guy that did it doesn't work for you anymore? That's bullshit. Okay. So it's very important to find somebody that really, what can I say, uh, uh, believes and, and is dedicated to doing what they're doing to your items. Um, I want to give a shout out. And the reason I'm telling you this is because this is the only fucking guy I've ever met in my life that knows how to take this wet blasting, this dustless blasting to the extreme of uh, precisely doing it right and not warping your shit. Um, if we look over here and we're going to look at that, he actually uh, dustless blasted the inside and outside of all these parts that you're looking at, and not one fucking minute warpage is in it. It is perfectly straight. It's all in the person that knows how to control the air pressure, how much sand they're blowing out, and doing the job properly. So remember that. I'm going to go ahead and 
We got Sandblast Steve. He lives right here in Moab, Utah. If you're in the Western Slope area, he's got the machine and he travels anywhere to do this. Um, he even sandblasted some driftwood for me and it really looks awesome. And when I get that done, I'm gonna show that to you. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give you his numbers. 435-260-1965. You tell him my friend Pete sent you. And my friend Pete said, you're an upstanding guy and you know what the fuck you're doing. Um, it's hard to find somebody to do this shit, people. If you live in this area, uh, anywhere in the Western Slope area, and you know what I'm talking about, if you're in the Western Slope area and you're watching this, call Steve up, 435-260-1965. I'm going to show you his phone number right there. And um, give this guy a call. Uh, he does everything from automotive parts to whatever the fuck you need blasted. It doesn't matter. He does it all. And very professional, very polite, and knows his shit when it comes to doing this. So give Steve a call, and uh, he'll hook you up. Let's move down the line now. Enough advertising. Um, I did want to mention his name. He actually is the one that blasted the Corvette with walnut shells. Never did it in his life. Uh, I think he was kind of scared to do it because I told him, look, dude, you better not fucking go through the gel coat or whatever layer is on there. And he actually took all the paint off right down to the epoxy primer. Amazing. So it's very important when you get this type of shit done that you find somebody you can trust and that you can put your classic car, you might say, into their hands that's not gonna fuck it up, especially if you're a body guy like me that's got to go back and fix all the fuck ups that were fucked up. Let's go ahead and move down the line. I'm gonna go on the other side of the camera now. Um, I hope everybody's having a good day. Let's give you an update on Minnie. Uh, Minnie has lost 38 pounds since she's been in Moab. We don't know why she's losing all this weight. Um, she looks like a train track rail. And she just went and had, I think, 17 blood tests. We'll get the uh, blood test results back on that on Friday. As far as her stomach uh, procedure went, she's healing up very quickly. She is back, I would say, 60%. Um, the other day, she was taking a picture of the hookup on a U-Haul uh, trailer. Uh, you gotta take a picture of the hookup with the license plate, and that goes with the contract. Well, she was on this side of the trailer and needed to be over here, so instead of walking around the trailer, she went through the trailer and the, the hitch and her foot caught on the hitch and threw her down on the ground. Um, we thought that she cracked her hip or broke her leg. Uh, she's so skinny that her, I mean, she's very frail. So we wanna go ahead and keep praying for many. If you're praying for many or you did pray for her, please say another prayer for her. Um, she is starting to get into the depression mode now of all this that's happened to her and we need to keep her spirits up and the only way to do that is to send out a prayer to her and let her know that everybody loves her. Um, in the meantime of Bam falling on the ground, she had the iPhone and I'm telling you this because if you have an iPhone Pro Max, <clears throat> beware. If you own an iPhone Pro Max 12 or 13, beware. She had the phone in her hand to take the picture. And when she fell, the phone was like this. This would be the face of it where the glass is. When she slammed on the ground, there just happened to be a rock about that big. And yes, bam, just like that, bam, shattered the whole screen. Um, so we're on our way. We got to go up to Salt Lake City on Sunday to pick up my totem pole from uh, Carver Guy Jim, and you're gonna wanna see that. That's a badass son of a bitch. He carved me a, a, I don't know how tall it is, but he said it's big and heavy. Uh, it's a totem pole, and uh, yeah, we'll be checking that out. But so when we go up there, we gotta get a screen for the phone at the Apple store, and that's gonna cost $600. So if you have a iPhone 12, or 13 Pro Max, the big one, don't break the fucking screen because it's going to cost you money. 
let's get back on to what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around. We're going to do a quick walk around, and then we're going to get to work because I got to get this shit done. We got a lot of stuff going on at DIY Auto School. We got the Camaro over there that I have got to get on. We finally got all the parts for that. We're going to go over that while we're walking around in this video. All these parts that you see here are for our Rustang. Believe it or not, I'm starting body work. The rust has been repaired. Uh, we got a little bit of rust right here to fix. Um, we're going to look at that deck lid. And I'm going to tell you what the owner decided to do for now. And I think we're on the road to success on our Rustang. The Rustang's looking badass. It's unbelievable what went on over here at SWR and C Southwest Rod and Custom on this car. Go to my, actually, my website is being reconstructed right now. Uh, my buddy Steve out in uh, Dallas is redoing my website, so you can't look at the pictures, but it will be on there soon. So let's get back to work here. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to show you and explain to you what's going on. Okay, so what we got here, we have this uh, uh, wet blasted, dustless blasted. And what we need to do is we need to clean this surface up. Anytime that you have anything blasted, it will make the surface super rough. Okay, the surface will be rough, and you shouldn't put anything on it until you prep the surface properly, and that's what this is all about. So this is the inside of the door right here. And when you're working on this particular type of vehicle, if you look real close, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a grain. All right, let's look over here. There's a grain inside the metal, all right? And this is a Mustang. All Mustang doors have this grain. And when you have that blasted, it's very important that the blaster knows what he's fucking doing because if you lose this grain, you're screwed. There won't be no grain there anymore. So, yeah, that's another reason that it's important to have the right guy doing the job for you. Now, as we look over here, here's our deck lid. Um, this is an eBay item, people. And let's get some thumbs up. We got 60 people watching. We only got 19, 20 thumbs. Come on, guys. Show your support here. I'm doing the best I can to teach you what's going on, okay? Uh, look at this deck lid. This was an eBay item. When I got this deck lid in, it didn't have this rust showing. This rust was not here. And when I say that, whoever sold it, what they did is they patched it up to sell it, all right? They patched it up to sell it, and this is what you get on fucking eBay. Now, we can't go back to the eBay guy because this was several years ago when the owner bought it. So what we're going to do, the owner is searching high and low for an OEM factory deck lid. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to patch this up. I'm going to fill it up. I'm going to do what I got to do to make it work on the car. And then when the owner finds an OEM factory deck lid that he likes, he'll go ahead and have it painted. Um, there'll be plenty of paint left over, so he'll have that painted and put it on there. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and use this deck lid. And when I get done with it, all this will be hidden just like our eBay item was when he bought it. And we'll fix that up. So he's in search of a deck lid. If anybody out there... Uh, what is that? 68, 69 fastback deck lid. It has to be OEM factory original. We don't care if there's a few minor dents in it, but we don't want no rust in it. If you happen to have one or know somebody, please contact my friend Pete. Very important. We do not want to put an aftermarket deck lid on this car. We want factory OEM original parts. If you have any links or know anybody, cut my friend Pete a deal and please call me and let me know where we can get that if somebody has one, that would be very appreciative. So we got our fenders over here and I got one right side up and I got one upside down. Now on the inside of our fenders, we really don't care if that's rough. We really don't give a shit because it's gonna be painted inside. You're not gonna ever see it. It's gonna be painted black. And then, I mean, you're gonna hang the fender and it's done. But we still got to prep that up, so I'm going to show you how to prep that. And then, of course, on the outside of the fender and the parts over here, I'm going to kind of walk you through it. And we're going to show you the proper way to prep 
sandblasted metal. I know this has taken a while to get to the point. Please follow me here. Very important that you know all this, guys, before we go any further. This is a backstory. Here's what we're talking about. This is dustless blasting sand. Now, I talked to Steve, and he said this is made out of old beer bottles. That's what they make it out of, and that's why it stinks so bad. He said it's, it's it, yeah, and it does stink like, it, it, like pig shit. It's just rotten pig shit. So you can see all the sand that was in that deck lid when I lifted it up. And that's another thing that's important. Make sure that you blow all the sand out of your parts and do not get them wet. Do not wash them out. All right. Now, these were sandblasted approximately three weeks ago. They've been sitting inside my shop. And they're ready for epoxy primer. Now, I live in a dry, very dry climate. If you live in a, a, a humidified climate that has a lot of moisture in there, you need to do this immediately. You don't need, you can't wait. The only reason I was waiting is because I was finishing up on this. So let's get down to business and let's get this done so you can learn how to do it. And I can quit talking and rambling and going on about nothing but nothing. Once again, this is a live video. So you're gonna see me moving the camera around and setting it up and all that. And there's nothing I can do about it. I'm very sorry. Um, I wanna go over what we're gonna to use to do this job. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a couple red Scotch-Brites. We're gonna use the red Scotch-Brite because that's the most coarsest Scotch-Brite. We wanna use red, don't use gray. Gray's not gonna do anything for you. Another thing I got here, I got uh, 80 grit. That's all we're going to be using. We're going to use 80 grit sandpaper. Now, this is file paper. This is something you would use for your air file or possibly your hand sander. It comes in rolls. You can buy it in different brands, different uh, uh, makes, models, and, and looks. comes in red, purple, green, yellow, whatever the fucking color you want. Get it. Um, then we got our 80 grit DA sandpaper. This is the name tool we're gonna to use. And I'm using the short throw DA sander. You don't need to use that sander. I just like to use this because I got more control on little stuff and, and uh, it's easier to use. So I got the short throw and we're gonna be using that on full force air, which means we're gonna be running about uh, 95 PSI through that. Um, and then one more important thing is gloves. You want to use gloves on this. You don't want to do this barehanded. And the reason is because there's a lot of sharp edges and uh, a lot of uh, stuff where you can cut your hands. So make sure you use some good gloves that are grease free, people. All right, these are my welding gloves. They don't have no grease or slime on them. I don't use them for mechanic work. Use some gloves. And you can't use rubber gloves. Rubber gloves are great, but rubber gloves will rip and tear and you're gonna cut your hands. So this is a protection. One more thing we're gonna use is safety glasses. Um, now you could go to the extreme and use some, uh, some ear plugs, ear muffs, uh, but we're not, matter of fact, I'm gonna go get mine. So let me go get mine and then we're gonna get to work. Okay, so we got our ear muffs on. I'm going to go ahead and put them on up here. And then we went over all the tools we're going to use. This is basically all we need. Um, I think you're kind of getting the picture here. So let's go ahead and start. Now we're going to go over to the door over here. I'm going to show you what I already did. And then we're going to take it from there. Okay, so you see the door here. Now, I told Steve, I said, kind of stop it up in this area and then I'll sand that down and get rid of that. 
Uh, the glass that's in this door is not the proper glass that's going to be used. But we still don't want to ruin the glass, and we don't want to ruin the tracks and everything else. So he went ahead and taped this off and got that. So what we're going to do, the first thing I did, I went ahead and removed all the old rubber. And on the inside of this door, we do not want to use sandpaper. And the reason is, if you were listening from earlier, uh, this has a texture on it. And we want to keep that texture. So the only place that I'm going to sand it, and I'm going to use a DA and go lightly over, is over here where we had a little bit of surface rust. And I'm going to show you that in a minute when we get to it. But the main thing that we want to use on this door is we want to use a red Scotch-Brite. All right? We want to use a red Scotch-Brite. And what this is doing, this is removing that really, really rough surface that is created from sandblasting. That's very important. And that's what we're calling prep. All right, to prep this right, you have to remove that super rough surface that is created from blasting, whether it's wet blasting, dustless blasting, uh, sand blasting. And the only blasting that will not leave a rough surface is soda blasting. Now, the thing that you have about soda blasting these days is that to get it done is very expensive. The cost of soda is outrageously high. And it, it, you know, normally when you get something blasted, they charge their labor plus, uh, plus the cost of how many bags they use of blasting, of blasting material. And soda used to be dirt cheap, but now it's like the most expensive thing made for blasting. So, yeah. That's the only thing. Uh, and if you get it soda blasted, you gotta clean the metal off with vinegar and then wash it down and still go over it with DA. All right, so watch some of my other videos if you're getting soda blast done. I got videos on that. But uh, to prep up the uh, sandblasting, this is how you're doing it. And you can basically see look really close you can see that I'm removing the layer of the sand that is left behind and that's what we want to do now one more thing I want you to do is I want you to see how I fix this door you will not believe what we had to do to this door to get this door to work on this car but once we do that uh, that's going to be on all the inside parts that we do. All, everything that's inside, we're going to use a red scotch bright. Now, just to show you that the scotch bright's working, you can see that that scotch bright is worn and torn. All right? So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and flip our door over. And... It's good to have two people on this action because these doors can be heavy and you don't want to drop the door like I'm about to do right now. Damn it. Okay. There you go. All right. So the way that we're going to prep the outside of our door is we are going to use our DA sander with 80 grit. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it up and we're gonna DA sand this down on the outside. And I want you to watch really close. You can see the fine layer of sand that's embedded on the metal. You'll see it flying off. Let me get the camera a little bit closer and watch close as I sandblast this door and you'll see what I'm talking about. All this black stuff that you see coming off, look how it's turning my glove yellow. All right, that's the sand that's embedded in the metal that we have got to remove.
Now, when you're DA sanding that, you're going to see where the metal's turning shiny. It's removing that thin layer of the residue and the sand that's left behind from blasting it. And that's what we want to do. All right? That's what we want to do. Now, one more thing about doing this is your sandpaper wears out very quickly. You have to change your sandpaper vigorously for it to work properly. And here's a good tech tip for anybody out there that wants to save money. Uh, this is the USC brand. Comes in a box of 50 and it's like $13. Or it was when I bought it. It's probably about $18 now, 20 bucks. But if you're looking to save money, get online and look for USC Purple Premium. This is some awesome shit and it works great. So we're gonna go ahead and put another piece on there because that's already worn out, people. Already worn out, guys. There's nothing we can do. Because when you are sanding this bare metal and you're removing the residue sand, it's going to eat that sandpaper up and it's going to eat it up quick. thing about using that DA sander to clean that metal off if you look at it really close you can see how shiny the metal's getting and smooth but you're also starting to show your road map where your dents are let me show you that and you can see it in the camera right now but I want to get a better look for you but you can see how nice and shiny that metal's getting from using that 80 grit but look what we got people you see that guys we just found our first dent in this door, and then here's another one right here. You can see it's dark, okay? So by using the DA to prep our door width to put epoxy primer on it, it's actually leading us into, here's a, that's nothing, okay. Leading us into where our roadmap is and our dents so we know what we're working with. Something else I wanna show you, I was telling you about finding the right guy to do the job. Look how nice and clean that metal is. All right, you can see there's no warpage. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks beautiful. This is going to be a clean, clean door. And it just came out awesome from getting it blasted by a real professional that knows what the fuck's going on besides going out there and ruining your shit so they can make a quick fucking dollar. Very important. So I'm going to go over it real quick one more time with the DA, then I'm going to show you how to finish this door out and have it prep for epoxy primer. <laughs>
Looks like I'm gonna have to change that paper, guys. Look what's going on. Do you see that? Look at that. All right, I'm gonna come up there to the camera. I wanna show you this. All right. Very important, you have to change your fucking sandpaper as you are working. One piece of sandpaper ain't gonna cut it. I'm sorry. If you want to cheesecake yourself and do a cheap job, then use one piece of sandpaper on everything. If you want to do it right, get a box of this shit I just showed you and do it like I'm telling you. So you kind of get the picture here, what it takes. And you see that just to do the door, just to prep this door right, has taken one red Scotch Bright and three DA sandpapers. Are y'all getting a picture of what's going on here? Because I'm going to tell you what the picture is in a minute. done but we're not first of all I want to go ahead and explain something this door handle that you're looking at over here is trash so is this lock and this wing window we are probably not going to use he's got other wing windows so if you're over there saying you should have put tape on that why is that door handle on there you just fucking run that lock okay don't do it don't do it because we're not here to criticize about shit that we're not talking about okay people so the last thing I'm going to do to prep this up, I'm going to take a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and this is where your gloves come in handy. And I'm just getting all the areas where the DA sander did not get. You see that? I'm going to get that edge right there, get that hinge, okay? Get around that wing window that we're not going to use, very good. There you go. Let's get around this lock. Then we're going to get inside this door handle that we're not going to fucking use. And guess what? This door is now prepped for epoxy primer. I want to show you something. Hang on a minute. All right, what you're looking at here, this is a prep door, but let me show you this. I want to show you this. This is important. I'm not blowing it off. What I'm doing, I'm sweeping it. Not to show you how to sweep it, but do you see that? Do you see that pile right there, people? That is what you call sandblast residue. If you don't prep this metal properly before you epoxy prime it, what's going to happen is that residue will be a layer between your metal and your epoxy primer. Here's our metal. Okay, this is our metal right here. Here's our layer, our thin layer of residue and sand that was left behind. And then here's our paint. Does that make sense? In between, you're going to have an air pocket. What's going to happen, moisture will get behind that and rust that metal out. This is what you need to remove, people, right here. That's it. Okay? So this door 
This door is prepped and ready. And look how nice it looks. This door is awesome. And the key to getting it to look this way is not by sanding it, not by prepping it, but by getting the right person to do your blast work. If you can't find the right guy that knows what's blast, how to blast, you're the one that's going to screw yourself. Do your investigation, do your uh, uh, research, and find out about this guy that's going to do the work for you, that's going to blast, before you even let them touch your metal. The reason I'm showing you the inside of this fender is because I'm showing this to you to make you realize this fender isn't warped. 98% of all blasters that own blasting machines out there that will blast inside and out will warp that fender. This is where it'll warp, right here. This is it. The top of that fender will warp. There's no warpage in these fenders. Because I put my trust into this guy to do this, and he did the proper job. He took his time. He knows how to set the pressure properly, air pressure, what type of sand to use, how much sand to mix with the pressure. Very important, guys. That's the fucking key right there, is finding that guy that can do the job that you want right. Now, I was telling you about the inside of the fender, and I was also telling you about gloves. I want everybody to look in this area here. Um, what you're looking at right here, this is where our emblems go on our fender, and it's got the barrel clips already installed in it, which we will probably remove, but we're not doing it right now. So you got to be careful with all these sharp edges. Very, very important. So what I do is I take my a red scotch right, and you'll see the residue, the stuff I'm talking about, you'll see it coming off. Even on the inside of the fenders, on the inside of the parts that are going to be, uh, what can we say, uh, exposed to bad weather, this is the most important pieces that you got to prep and get that, that thin layer off. All right, because if water and moisture get up in here, it's going to go straight to that fucking metal in between those two layers that I was telling you about, and it's going to ruin your job. So it's important to take that scotch right and get that son of a bitch prepped up properly. And you can see it coming off. I mean, if you're watching close enough and you're paying attention... And you want to learn, I mean, you're, you can see that thin layer residue falling off of there as I'm doing this. And when I do a car that is blasted, I do this, to, this is what I do to all of it. This is, I do this to every single one of them. Whether it was soda blasted, if it's soda blasted, I use vinegar and red scotch bright or possibly steel wool. If it's walnut blasted, I'll use a red scotch bright. You've got to get that layer off of that metal. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So what I'll do is I'll keep going and continue to work on this until it's ready. It's actually going to take me approximately, it's going to take approximately uh, 
half a day, three quarters of a day, just to get this all prepped up properly. Um, I got to take these off and prep those. So we got a lot of work to do here. And what I'm trying to tell you is it takes a lot of work. And if you're one of them lazy asses out there that aren't dedicated to doing a lot of work, then you need to hire someone like me and be prepared to pay what it takes to do this. Because this, my friend, is hard work. Remember, the key to having something blasted and not come back warped is finding the right person to do it. Now, I'm gonna tell you again, I'm not sitting here trying to make an advertising video for this guy, but if you are on the western slope of Colorado, Utah area, and we're talking all the way out to Cortez, uh, possibly Durango, you need to call Steve, go back in the video to the beginning, and he will travel to your location to do the job right. I don't know how much he charges. I know how much he charged for me. All right, the price was reasonable, but he's got to make a living, just like everybody else. Let's go in there. I'm going to show you the epoxy primer that I've been using to put on this metal. Now, one more thing that I want to tell you, and I want to make this very clear. Epoxy primer is a non-sandable primer. If anybody tells you to take 2K primer and add reducer to it and it's epoxy, that's bullshit. That is not true. The hardeners and activators that are used in 2K sandable primer are totally different than the activators and hardeners in epoxy primer. Whoever tells you that is a lying fucking fool. And if it's a company that says their product is that, they're lying to you so you can buy it. Why would I sit here and lie to you? Why? I don't buy any products from any company that says, our 2K primer is epoxy primer at 10% reducer, and that's what it is. I don't use that shit. I will not buy anything from that company because if they're going to lie to you once, then everything they fucking make is a lie. That's my opinion, and I'm going to stick with it, and if you don't like it, tough shit. I want to show you this car over here that I put epoxy primer on it. And that epoxy primer has been on that car for seven fucking years. It ain't been sanded. It hasn't been nothing. It was epoxy primed after I did all the body, after I did all the metal work, and it's a done deal. Okay? Epoxy primer is a sealer. It is not a primer. They only call it primer because that's the substance and the, uh, the nicality of what it is. You are covering the metal. Now, a lot of other people are asking, can I do body work on top of epoxy primer? Everybody has their own opinion about that. I don't do body work on top of epoxy primer. I use prim epoxy primer for sealer. And when I do my body work, I will sand or grind the uh, uh, epoxy primer off of the vehicle where the body work needs to be done. You've seen me do that in my videos. That's how I do it, okay? Other people will say, yeah, put it on there. Well, it's, it's all your choice, what you want to do. I don't believe in that. I go to bare metal where body work's going to be, and that's it. We got a lot of stuff for our Camaro. Um, I'm going to make extensive videos on this product, the CPP Classic Performance Products. What we got here is we got full Y2K suspension package, front and rear. We got all the parts that we need to put our motor and transmission together. We also found a company out there, and I believe this is the name of them. It's called American Powertrain. That's where uh, the owner, Otto, finally found all the parts he needed to put the motor and tranny together. But they also make tons and tons of parts to hook that late model transmission up to your classic car. And when I say that, they even have the conversion kit um, to use your old school original uh, speedometer. So we're going to be making extensive videos on that as well. 
But I want to go ahead and go over the epoxy primer that I'm going to use. And one more thing, I'm only going to put two quick wet coats on that. That's it. Once again, this is only a sealer to seal it, to remove that layer, to seal it up so I can begin, so I can bolt all the body parts back on the car and, and do the body work. That's all that's for. And then we go from there. But it's very important that you got to remove that residue thin fucking layer that's left behind. Even from dry sanding, there's a residue that's left behind. Trust me. Very important. So the epoxy primer that I've been using for over 12 years is the shop line JP375. This is a very high quality, good quality epoxy primer. It's reasonably priced. And I've never, ever had any type of problem using this epoxy primer. So that's what I use. I will use two wet coats on it to seal it. And then that's all I need. Now on the inside of the fenders, remember I was telling you on the inside of the fenders, I'm gonna paint that black. Let me go over here. I wanna show you what I use for that. We're gonna come over here, and then and this is a commercial performance, and I wanna show you this. This is an alkyde enamel. Now, this is white. We're not using white. I'm gonna use black. Here's some black. This is an alkyde enamel. This is a direct to metal paint if you want to do that. This is the exact same type of coating and type of paint that they use at the factories to paint frames and uh, undercoat, or should I say underbody uh, metal structures. This is it right here, okay? Alkyde enamel, do you see that? Alkyde, all right, commercial, remember that. A gallon set of that is very, very reasonably priced, very reasonably priced. This is shop line black epoxy primer. Okay, you can see I use a lot of shop line stuff. A lot of shop line, that's epoxy primer. All right. When I buy my paint supplies, when I go to buy my paint supplies and I do this for a reason, I buy bulk quantity. The reason I do that is because the world is so fucking crazy now. The world is so fucking out of whack on this fucking let's raise the prices on everything that we can raise prices on and fuck the consumer that when I buy a gallon of Bondo, I buy two to three cases of fucking Bondo. When I buy a gallon of epoxy primer, I buy two cases of shit because you never know when the prices are gonna go up. So if you are a shop owner, quit buying one gallon at a time, buck it up, okay, face the facts and get it by the case. Because by the time you need another gallon, that shit might be $25 fucking dollars a gallon more. That's just a little advice from me to you. We were talking about epoxy primer. We were talking about sealers. Um, and we're talking about, I got a lot of shit going on here. Because besides all this right here, besides all that, I got to do everything in that box. And I got to do this piece right here. So we're going to leave it at that. And remember... If you are sandblasting or you're dustless blasting, remember that the metal is not ready, all right? It is not ready for any type of paint primers or anything. You have to prep it. And you saw me do this door. This door is smooth as glass, very, very nice. And it is prepped to put our epoxy primer on so we can continue to work on that car over there. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, taking my glove off so I can hit the off button. If you hang on a second. There we go right there. And this is an all day job. I'll be out here all fucking day doing this. Tomorrow I'm hoping to bolt all the body parts on that car. We're gonna get all organized. We're gonna start doing all the body work to it, get it all done. And we're also going to be working on our Camaro. And I'm going to make an a, a unboxing uh, video of this. I was going to do a live video of it. But there's so much shit there that it would take two hours to uh, make an unboxing. So I'll do that. 
and then I'll get that posted. And then I will make uh, videos, detailed videos on each individual uh, item on here, just like I did on our Mustang with our total control performance parts, um, which is coming up soon. If you're building a high performance Mustang like Mr. Uh, Rustang here, you're gonna wanna watch all those videos, uh, the installation on all this stuff. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. We're getting ready to go, take it easy. And I hope this gave you some type of knowledge and some type of uh, lesson that when you do work like this, you have to take pride in what you're doing and you've got to do it right. This is gonna be a lot of technical sanding. Um, this is actually pot metal. This is not metal, this is pot metal. So we really gotta get this smoothed out. But you can see the high quality uh, blast job that he did on this. He didn't ruin any of the edges. Very, very high quality, very professional. And that's the key word right here, people. Just like I did that door, I did it professionally and we did it right. Because if you're not doing it right, doing it right, doing it right, you're not doing it at all. I gotta go.